In this lecture, we want to just finish talking about the kinetics of phase transformations. And today we're going to uh, talk specifically about the transformation rate. Uh, recall that we had already talked about the nucleation rate, and we had said that uh, the next um, component that we needed to think about was the growth rate. So let's think through uh, what diffusion-mediated phase transformation growth requires. Uh, hopefully you're thinking it's diffusion. But let's look at this uh, drawing here of a eutectoid transformation. So we have the austenite or the gamma phase um, uh, here in purple. And we have these, these new phases um, growing into the austenite. And in order for that to occur, uh, the carbon has to diffuse away from the alpha phase and into the cementite phase. So we are going to require diffusion through this gamma phase. Okay, so that's one one component of diffusion. The next is that we're going to require diffusion through the phase boundary. And then finally, we're going to require diff diffusion into the actual nuclei that, that exist. So into those growing nuclei, we have to have diffusion of carbon. So there's three different types of diffusion that are occurring, at least in a, in a, a solid phase transformation. And uh, so we are hopefully expect that the growth rate will take the same form as the diffusion coefficient does. And, and, it, and so this looks just like an, an Arrhenius form where uh, G dot is the growth rate, C uh, is some temperature independent constant, and Q is an activation energy. Of course, KT just being the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Um, any, any process that obeys this growth rate uh, are going to be termed thermally activated processes. And that, all that's saying is that there requires some amount of thermal energy to overcome an energy barrier. So if that, if that process is occurring, that's called thermally activated. Okay, so we've talked about growth rate now. Uh, if we plot what that growth rate looks like, it's, it's exactly as expected. Uh, it grows faster as we raise the temperature, right? Uh, because that's how, um, that's how Arrhenius... Uh, rate uh, uh, materials behave, uh, but we know that that the transformation is not only a function of the growth rate; it's also a function of the nucleation rate. And so, what I'm showing you here in the red curve is the nucleation rate. So we have a rapidly increasing growth rate and a nucleation rate with that peak that we talked about in the previous lecture, and. Because transformation rate is a result of the combined effect of nucleation and growth, remember, both of them, both nucleation and growth, are occurring simultaneously during a phase transformation. So because of that, we, we end up with an overall transformation rate that looks like this blue curve, where there's some peak in it. Uh, it looks kind of like the peak that we saw in the nucleation curve. Um, Okay, so if that's the overall transformation rate, let's think about what kind of microstructures we can uh, expect from various uh, locations on this curve. Well, if we're, if we're sitting at this relatively high temperature, still below the transformation temperature, but fairly high, we know that the growth rate is going to be fairly high. But the nucleation rate uh, here in the red curve is going to be low. So as a result, you're going to have relatively few grains, but fast growth. Hopefully that that uh, leads you to think that we're going to have large grains, and that is exactly what we have. So if we reduce the temperature a little bit, then our nucleation rate speeds up, uh, but our growth rate slows down. So if we make the nucleation rate high and the growth rate low, we expect to have many small grains instead of a few large grains. If we cool it down enough, um, such that the nucleation rate is low and the growth rate is low, then it can actually lead to non-equilibrium phases. And we're going to see this uh, in the case of steel, uh, uh, which will be in the next lecture when we start talking about some of the phases that emerge uh, as, we, uh, as we develop microstructure during cooling in, in steels. So uh, just be aware that if we cool it uh, to a low enough temperature before some of these other um, transformations can take place, then we can get these non-equilibrium phases. In this case, uh, for steel, it'll be martensite. Okay, so now we want to talk a little bit about transform uh, transformation time. We've been talking about rates thus far, um, so you, you can kind of see 
what the relationship has to be. Uh, if the rate is very fast, then the transformation time is very small. So large rate, small time, transformation time is, an inver is the inverse of the rate. Um, we're going to define some conventions now. So by convention, we consider the transformation time, and we call it T0.5, to be when 50% of the transformation that's going to occur has occurred. And also by convention, we consider the transformation rate to be the reciprocal of the, the uh, transformation time. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of what the time temperature behavior looks like? Well, um, this, is the, this is the rate curve that we just talked about. Uh, so we, as, we, as we increase, or let's say as we decrease the temperature from the, the um, uh, transformation temperature, the rate initially increases, we hit some peak, and then it decreases again, right? If we were to take and plot now the reciprocal, so the, remember the rate's one over t to the 0.5. If we take the on a log scale just the time, we end up with a curve that looks sort of like it's a mirror image, where we have this uh, uh, the the time of of uh, transformation getting smaller and smaller, which means that the reaction is speeding up up to this point. And then now, as we we lower the temperature further, the the reaction or the transformation takes longer and longer. So this nose occurs wherever the transformation is fastest. It's also characteristic of these uh, diffusion-mediated transformations, at least um, in these solid phase transformations. OK. Uh, any sort of diffusion-mediated solid state transformation is going to typically follow a curve like I've shown here, where there's going to be some phase of nucleation and then some phase of growth. Now, they are occurring simultaneously, but oftentimes we, we try to separate them in terms of the what's the primary uh, uh, feature of the transformation at that time. So. Uh, we have a early early on we have nucleation and then we have the, uh, the growth phase. There's our T to T 0.5 uh, right at where the, the transformation is at 50%. Okay, so let's talk through what makes the the features of this curve. Well, the first one is that early on the rate's going to increase as the interfacial surface area uh, grows uh, and uh, just as the nuclei grow. And it's going to reach some maximum rate at about uh, when half the transformation has taken place. So what's happening now, though, is that we've already con we've already transformed half of the material. So there just isn't as much to continue transforming. And as a result, that rate slows down. Uh, and then finally, it completes. Um, the equation that, that we use to describe this uh, transformation it's called the Avrami equation, and it's it's a fairly simple equation that uses the the fraction transformed and just sets it equal to one minus e to the negative k t to the n. In this case, k is not the Boltzmann constant; uh, it's it's simply a time independent constant, and n is also a time independent constant. So if you want to use this equation, it has to be fitted to the material or system that you're actually working with. Um, so that, that sort of completes all that we want to say just as a preliminary to phase transformations before we then move now specifically to um, phase transformations in, in the iron carbon system.